If you look at the SwiftUI preview you can see in my screen right now, you'll see the standard iOS picker interface. It's a spinning barrel of interface options you can just swipe through. And it's gonna show the first option by default, cash, because it reads the payment type value we have already set. That's a default, show cash in here. However, when the user moves around a credit card or iDine uh, points, the selection changes. And that means they want to pay a credit card or, or points rather than cash. And so this picker, this wheel thing, doesn't just read the value of payment type. It also writes the value of payment type. This is what's called a two-way binding. We read the value, we write the value. Any changes to payment type will update the picker. Picker will jump to that new position. Similarly, any UI touches to the picker to change its picker will update the variable. They're both attached to each other. And this is where the dollar sign comes in. This part here, dollar payment type. Uh, Swift property wrappers use that to provide a two-way binding to their underlying data. Uh, and so when we say dollar payment type, we mean uh, write the value using the property wrapper, which will stash it away and, and, and hopefully cause the UI to be refreshed immediately. But if we change it elsewhere, read it back in and, and, and update the picker as well. So it's going both ways with that dollar sign. Now, at first glance, uh, if you're coming to SwiftUI from UIKit, you might think all these dollar signs and uh, all these at signs seem uh, deeply unswifty, to put it mildly. And it's true, if you're coming from UIKit, you might not be used to working this way. However, they allow us to get functionality that would otherwise require all sorts of hassle. You know, this state thing is letting us change the payment type property, which seems simple, but remember, we're working inside a struct. Structs are naturally immutable. We're able to change this property dynamically because state takes care of it. Uh, without the state object we had in the original app, we'd have no way of saying, make this class and keep it alive for the entire lifetime of our application. Without uh, environment object, we'd have no way of passing data around everywhere in our app and sharing it and having our UI uh, refresh. You know, without the observable object protocol, we would have no way of notifying views of changes. Um, without these uh, dollar property bindings here, we'd have no way of doing two-way bindings. So yes, the at symbols and dollar symbols seem a bit alien at first in Swift UI, if you're from UIKit, but they do save a lot of work and do so much on our behalf. Anyway, that's our basic picker complete, the spinning wheel thing here. And so if we go back to uh, orderview.swift over here, that's where we're making our order. We have this uh, place order button here. Uh, right now it's got a, a destination of text checkout, which we don't want. We want to actually go to the uh, real checkout view here. So our destination for my navigation link will be checkout view. Create one of those and navigate to that point. And let's press Command R and see how it looks. Uh, so I'm gonna say I want to have some Power Muesli, order this, go to the order screen, and press Place Order. Boom, how do I pay? I mean, it works. It uh, isn't great, <laughs> but it works. We could use that, but we can do better than this. And honestly, you think how much work it took to get to this point, we'd uh, <laughs> have something better, but we haven't yet but we're about to change one word, one word, to make a significant improvement in this code. And I hope it'll make all your work feel very justified. Uh, inside checkout view, uh, look for this word here, vstack, and change it to be form, like that. The vstack becomes form in checkout view. And now press Command R to build and run the code. One word's difference. Again, Power Muesli, order this, order, place order, and now, what we see is this. How do you want to pay? Cash is selected. I'll press that. There's cash with a check mark. I'll choose I dine points. Boom. Back to the first screen again. So previously, we had the sort of default iOS spinning picker style, but now we've changed VStack into a form. We get a single table row. This thing right here. It shows our picker's question, how do you want to pay, and its currently selected value. And when it's tapped, it slides in, showing alternative options, checking the current one, choose a new one, it pans away and shows that option on that first screen. And this is the power of SwiftUI's declarative approach, approach even, to layouts. We say what behavior we want. 
rather than having to design this pushing, popping, updating behavior by hand, we just want a form and automatically adapt to the context where it's used. So it's really, really nice. Okay, that's the first part of our form. Let's continue on by adding two more components. One that lets you just say whether they have an iDyne loyalty card or not, and another that lets them enter their card number. Both of these require two-way bindings, just like our uh, selection dollar payment type here. So we're gonna have two new at state properties for them. So I'll say there is at state, private var, add loyalty details equals false. And then at state, private var, loyalty number is an empty string. And now we can add controls to our form to represent these pieces of data. One will be a toggle, which is a switch equivalent to a UI switch coming from UI kit to handle this Boolean true or false. And one is a text field equivalent to a UI text field in UI kit to handle this string being entered here. And so we already have a form section right here. Let's press uh, option command P so it'll preview as we go. There we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add two more things to this. The first is a toggle saying add iDyne loyalty card. And it is on property, it's going to be bound to dollar add loyalty details. So again, that will be on or off depending on that property. It's false right now, so the, the toggle's off. But if the toggle's true, that property becomes true. It's reading and writing, it's two-way binding. Then below that, we'll say there's a text field here with enter your iDyne ID. And for the text, that's gonna come from dollar loyalty number. So again, it reads from that value and writes back to that value. So let's recap. Both these properties here, uh, both these views, sorry, are attached to our at state properties. Uh, the toggle has some text before it. Do you wanna add the loyalty card or not? Which is shown as description. And the text field has some text as well, enter ID, ID, but that's grayed out. That is placeholder text. So as soon as they start typing into that box, it'll be hidden and they'll see their ID, iDyne uh, ID instead. Now, before we run the app, there's one more change I wanna make. This text field here, enter your ID, iDyne ID, iDyne ID, cranky. Um, this only makes sense if they have a loyalty card. Like if they haven't got a loyalty card, why are we asking them for an ID? Does it make sense? Now we actually bound this toggle to this property here, add loyalty details, which means as they flick on or off that toggle, it'll update the boolean to be true or false and reload the body with the new program state. So wouldn't it be great if we only showed that text field when the boolean was true? Well, it turns out that's pretty easy to do. We can literally pick this condition here, uh, this thing here and, and wrap around it. We could say uh, if add loyalty details, like that. Only show that if the toggle is true. So I press Command R. Let's add a uh, superfood salad. Yeah, order that one. Brilliant. Uh, order, place order, nothing there. Flick it on, boom. So it only now appears when it needs to, which is brilliant. It's doing all the work for us. Now, hopefully you can understand why this makes sense. The toggle here has a two-way binding to the add loyalty details property. Uh, and so when the toggle is changed, the property updates to reflect the new toggle state. This thing is marked with at state, uh, which means when that changes at any point, it will refresh the body, which will reread the value of add loyalty details and then show the text field. Now notice how it's a not dollar add loyalty details. We're not making a two-way binding here. We're not trying to read and write. It's just a read. Just read the value of the Boolean. I'm trying to update it here. So it's gotta be just regular if add loyalty details. Now, if you want to, you can actually make this even better. You can say our toggle is bound to dollar add loyalty details dot animation, which means animate from true to false. Animate changes as a result of this state happening. I press Command R now. Uh, let's add this time a full English, order this, order and place order. When I toggle it, boom. Now the extra row just slides in smoothly. It looks fantastic. Okay, let's try another common control, a segmented control. Now in SwiftUI, it's actually just another picker. 
this time modified to be a segmented control rather than another kind of view. So it works in exactly the same way. Give it a two-way binding to some kind of property that stores its selection value and use a for each to load up all the values you want to show. Now, for this screen, we're gonna use segmented control to represent a tip percentage. How much tip do you want to add? So we can represent that with uh, first, the value we want to show. So we'll say, let tip amounts be an array of uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, and for the misers, zero. And we'll also add uh, a state property to store the actual sigma value they've chosen, 15%, 20%, whatever it is. So at state private var uh, tip amount equals 15. They want to pay a 15% tip. And now we can put all that into a segmented control in our form. Now I'm going to put this into a new section. Here's our first section here, how do you want to pay, whatever. The new section here will be for tips. So that's our end of the first one, boom. Let's say section has a header, text, add a tip, question mark. And inside there is another picker. So I'll say the picker with a percentage. Selection we bound to dollar tip amount, and I'll hide this left-hand menu here to make it easy to read. And we'll do for each tip amounts with ID of self, text, and string interpolation, we'll do dollar zero percent. So 10%, 15%, whatever it is along the way. But critically, I'm also going to say this thing has a picker style of segmented picker style you segmented control here rather than anything else. Let's refresh that, see how it looks. Boom, exactly as we expect. How much tip do you want to add to your order? Now we're gonna add one more component to our form, which is a button to actually confirm the order. Um, we're gonna come back to the actual functionality of this to confirm the order in just a moment, because uh, there are other things we've gotta look at first. Let's go and do that, the, the button at least now. We'll say as a, a, a new section, and the header this time is uh, text total of 100. And inside there we'll say the button saying uh, confirm order. And the action for that's gonna be a comment just saying place the order. Obviously that's not real. Obviously that's not real. The total 100 is not always gonna be real, but it's good enough for now. Just run the app for now. Let's see what you think. Hopefully it's all gonna work very nicely to find out. So I'm going to add a uh, uh, cheese toasty, yeah. Order that, place order, boom. So we can now go ahead and select various amounts from this. Notice how the confirm order thing is left aligned, glows blue. It's part of the whole form now. It recognizes the button inside a form looks different to a regular floating button. So it's styling it for us. Again, it understands the context we're using this thing in. So it just looks better. It's styled correctly. And this is what, again, a huge advantage for SwiftUI's declarative layout approach.